uh, there. What happened to you yesterday at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York? Well, I, I was in the process of doing the final boarding of the aircraft uh, where, you know, right before you cross the threshold into the airplane, uh, the, uh, the airline attendants ask, you know, just to review your tickets and your passport. And I handed it to them. They motioned to go on the airplane and suddenly three um, uniformed, armed Customs and Border Patrol um, officers came up and uh, asked if I was, um, you know, William Scott Ritter Jr. I said, yes, I am. They ushered me out of the line. Um, then they uh, demanded that I give them my passport, which I complied with. And then they um, asked me that if this was my only travel document, do I have any other travel documents? Uh, I said, no, uh, this is my U.S. passport. It's the passport I use to travel overseas and I have used frequently, including to Russia. And they said, well, we're seizing it. And I said, on what authority? They said, um, on the orders of the United States uh, State Department. I said, who in the State Department? They said, we don't know. I said, well, who ordered you to do this? So you, you obviously are, we don't know. We can't tell you. We're not authorized to tell you. Um, they wouldn't give me a receipt for the passport. Um, they just said, you got to contact the State Department. I said, who in the State Department? They said, we don't know. You just, you're going to have to figure that one out. Then they um, they got my bags off the airplane and um, escorted me out of the uh, security zone um, into the general, uh, you know, where you walk in and said, you're free to leave. And uh, that was that. Do you have um, uh, the names of uh, or a photograph of any of the three of them? No, I mean, I was, um, I mean, you know, Judge, in retrospect, there's much that I should have done. Um I was in my mindset getting ready to get on an airplane and go to the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. I was focused on that. My mind was already what's going to happen when I land in Russia. Um, and so this took me completely by surprise. And um, I failed to uh, get the names of the three officers um, and I failed to get a photograph. I mean, there are security systems all over the place. And, um, you know, I am going to be making a call to the um, Customs and Border Patrol unit at the JFK uh, to get the names of these officers, uh, whether or not they'll give them to me is another question. Well, eventually you'll get all of this under the proper legal process, but they obviously interfered with your free speech rights and you're protected by the First Amendment and your, um, your right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures protected by the Fourth Amendment and what the Supreme Court has recognized protected by several amendments. Uh, is your right uh, to travel. Was I with you? No, you weren't. Um, actually, you weren't with me because I made a phone call to you early in the earlier in the morning um, recommending that you not travel to Russia. Um, and it had nothing to do with what happened to me and everything to do with what happened to our sponsor, Alexander Zirianov, who, um, from my standpoint, tragically was placed under arrest in um, in uh, Novosibirsk on his way to St. Petersburg. Um, you know, we can discuss that in a, in a moment if you'd like to. Um, I did not, you know, I like you. I consider you a friend, not just a colleague. And there was no way I, you know, because I'm the guy who came to you and said, Hey, judge, you need to come to Russia. You need to do this. Let's make this happen. I got people that want to talk to you. They extended invitations to you in retrospect, you could have gone to Russia. Um, but I couldn't guarantee a positive outcome. And I am not going to be responsible for putting Judge Napolitano on an airplane into an unknown situation. Uh, today, I now know that uh, Alexander Zirianov's team, uh, together with the presidential administration, had cobbled together a group that was going to receive us and lead us through the St. Petersburg Economic Forum with to ensure no hassles, no anything uh, that, you know, nothing bad would have happened. But when I initially got this information, there's my good friend, Alexander. Um, when I got the information, I didn't know what was going on. Um, I didn't know if this was reflective of a change in Russian government attitude or policy. And uh, while I am dumb enough to get on a plane and fly into the unknown, hoping for the best, um, I wasn't going to be responsible for that happening to you. So I made a phone call and I strongly recommended that you not get on that airplane. In and, we, 
It was we the had right. the, we had that phone call about five in the morning as I was about to leave my house. The only reason I've asked you this is because of all these news reports that the same thing happened to me as happened to you. I am yeah. deeply and profoundly grateful for your friendship, which will be a lifelong friendship, for the um, uh, the care and courtesy you have for me as a person and for my public persona. Uh, and for these efforts to introduce me to people who are interested in what we have to say. And I know those efforts uh, will be unending. Um, uh, you have a very, very serious case against the United States uh, State Department. And many, many lawyers will happily uh, bring that case for you in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of New York, which sits in Brooklyn, but which covers uh, events uh, at JFK, you could also bring it in the Northern District of New York, up in New York State, where you uh, live. You could bring it uh, in either place. I can't imagine what conceivable defense there could be for this. No matter what you and I have said anywhere on the planet about Russia, about Israel, about Gaza, about Ukraine, about Joe Biden, about Vladimir Putin, it is all protected free speech protected because we have the natural right to speak and expressly protected by the First Amendment. The same goes You're, for your right to be free from unreasonable search and seizures. They didn't have a warrant. If they had a warrant, they would have shown it to, to you. And of course, they violated their own profound regulations by not giving you uh, a receipt. They're supposed to give you a receipt so that when you sue them, the court will know who it is that took this uh, away from you. Now you're going to have to do some investigation uh, on your own. The State Department is huge. Was this Tony Blinken? Was this uh, Jake Sullivan? Or was this some local functionary who didn't like something they heard you say? It's an outrageous abuse of power. It is profoundly unconstitutional. And I am aggrieved that you, my friend, uh, were hurt by this. But it's, it's bigger than this, Judge. Um, I mean, the State Department using government appropriated monies for this purpose created a center for countering disinformation as an adjunct of the Ukrainian president's office. They did this in uh, 2022. Um, one of the first things that this center for countering disinformation did under the guidance and direction of the state department of the United States was to issue a blacklist of people that they called information terrorists. And on that blacklist, uh, were a large number of, of Americans, including myself. And this list, this, this center since that time, and here's the important thing about being called an information terrorist. That's a specific term being used by the Ukrainians backed by the United States government. They said that an information terrorist must be hunted down and brought to justice the same way any terrorist would. And so I've been accused of saying things that make the Ukrainian government unhappy. They now say that I must be hunted down and arrested, detained, killed, as would any other terrorist in the world and other Americans as well. They have made me, this center, again, with the U.S. State Department's uh, support, has put out a list that, you know, a weekly list where they say, I'm the number one uh, threat to truth about uh, Ukraine. I'm the number one threat to Ukraine. I must be dealt with. They put out a monthly list where I top this list regularly. Plus, there's the Mir Tvoritz hit list run by the Ukrainian intelligence services that I'm on, which marks you for death. They actually assassinate people. They have made two attempts against me uh, on previous trips to Russia. The State Department has never condemned the Ukrainian intelligence services for marking U.S. citizens for death simply because they disagree with what they say. Free speech means nothing in the Biden America today. It actually, free speech has not only become something that gets you targeted for your passport removal, that's an inconvenience that I am confident will be dealt with in due course. They're marking me for death, Judge, and that's something you don't come back from. And you're telling us that there's some purported NGO, which is actually funded by the State Department, that is behind this. Well, the, it's behind the most recent um, outpouring of. Thing the, the 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 Center for Countering Disinformation is not an NGO. That's a government that that works for the president, the office of the president in Ukraine. But it's organized, funded, and 
directed by the State Department. When you look at the meetings where they promulgated the blacklist, in there they say, and at this meeting are the following State Department officials and the following officials from the United States Embassy. Now, one would imagine that at any meeting of this nature where somebody said, topping our agenda today is we're going to blacklist 40 American citizens for exercising uh, their, you know, for saying things we disagree with. At that juncture, duty demands that American government officials stand up and say, we object. You can't prosecute Americans for free speech. You can't use American money for this regard. But instead, the U.S. government sat there and supported this facilitated this. And this is done on the direction of the U.S. Congress. This money was allocated by the U.S. Congress, voted on by the U.S. Congress, which appears to violate, again, not just the intent, but the letter of the law. Congress shall not pass any laws or legislation that are designed to infringe on the free speech of Americans. Congress gave the Ukrainian government money, which they're using, to infringe on the free speech of Americans. Another uh, example of the government attempting to do indirectly through another government what it can't do uh, directly. So the American uh, Congress, Joe Biden, allowed to spend this money however he wants. I think it's $165 billion at last count. He can spend it however he wants, and he's chose to spend some of it uh, in this gaggle uh, of, uh, of people, Ukrainians and Americans, who have a list of people whom they want to silence and whom they want to kill. This is just not the America that the founders gave us, Scott. You are uh, a remarkable example, not only of intellectual honesty, but of uh, personal courage. Uh, as you know, because we are friends, I will be happy to work on this uh, litigation uh, with you. Uh, I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope a couple of phone calls will return your uh, your passport. But there's much more of an aggrieved situation here, as you pointed out, than just uh, the passport. And those of you watching ought to know, the world needs to know how corrupt the Joe Biden, Tony Blinken State Department is, that they would do something like this, pay to silence Scott Ritter, interfere with his freedom of travel, suppress his rights to free speech, and I am sorry and almost terrified to utter this, threaten him with death. 